Hello, hello, hello. Let's turn the music down. Oh, it's good stuff. Always start your day with a dance. Hello and welcome to the open source stream with Cockroach Labs. Today we are exploring an unpublished Jamstack app, which I've already finished the code uploading to GitHub. I'm super excited. <laughs> Um, I am Rain Leander, your developer advocate with Cockroach Labs, one of many developer advocates. And if you're interested, we have an opening for a third developer advocate slash technical community manager to join our team. I will also put that in the links below. Um, and you too can come dance while you code. If you're interested, if you're interested, you don't have to dance, actually. It's cool. It's cool. That, that's, that could be my thing. It's cool. All right. So what we have going on today is I, every Monday, I do a Cockroach DB sample app. Um, and I will admit that this month uh, was a little bit difficult. <laughs> In the sense that I am just now getting this article up. It will be published this week, maybe early next week. Um, and I am doing a preview here. I'm doing a preview. It might have a different title by the time it goes live, but the code already exists on GitHub. And, um, and so I would invite you to follow along in the stream. We will then maybe publish this with the blog post because we don't usually stream first and then do the post, but this time we are because we're sassy like that. And, and that's it, that's, that's it. Um, you will need a Netlify account, a Cockroach DB account. Um, and I didn't actually have to um, so this goes over, it's a uh, Jamstack web application. It's um, the actual um, application is about tracking four different activities, um, hiking, swimming, other two other things, I forget. Um, and, and basically, oh, skating and soccer, football. Uh, European football, American soccer, however you want to put it. Um, and it's, you know, it's not going to replace Fitbit, but it's a good example of the kind of thing that you could do with Cockroach DB, Jamstack, Netlify. We're going to use a rea React static function to actually do the site generation. Um, and all the codes provided. You're going to want to have a Netlify account, like I already said. And if you are watching this right now and you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the chat. I'll do my best to re reply to them. This is a two hour stream. And honestly, this might take the full two hours. So let's get started. <laughs> um, let's see, prerequisites. Uh, Cockroach DB serverless account, you can get that through. Um, cockroachlabs.cloud. Um, I'm already logged in and I'll let you see what it looks like when you're logged out. Um, I tend to use my GitHub account for as much as possible. So I do not have to think about it <laughs> and, and keep a hold of several different, uh, let me make that bigger, bigger, bigger. Oh, apparently it doesn't get any better. It doesn't listen to you. Fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, these won't increase. Why won't these increase in size? They're super tiny to me. Let me know if you need it embiggened. Nothing is getting bigger. Why? Why? And where's my Zoom? Oh, 
I'm fired. There we go. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say what I was clicking on my keyboard shortcut, but it was not the correct command plus. So we're done here. OK, um, a basic understanding of JavaScript. Yes, in order to understand the underlying code. But if you are technical, you can follow the instructions and you'll be fine. Uh, Node.js on your system with each, either Yarn or NPM package manager. Again, yes, but the instructions are there and Yarn and NPM package managers both then correct you if you don't have the right stuff installed. A Netlify account, the Git information um, and an understanding of Git operations. These two are technically not needed because you end up using Netlify to actually, and, and React Static, to do all of the interactions with the GitHub repo. Um, or I am totally wrong and it had some underlying effect that I didn't notice because I do have those things <laughs> installed. <laughs> Um, but the only time I actually needed to have a GitHub account was when I finally pushed the repo online. That said, there might be something inherent. And if you don't have Git installed and run into a problem, I would love to know. OK. So. Uh, yeah, this is about installing a Jamstack app. Uh, CockroachDB is a highly available and distributed SQL app database. You use it locally on your own computer or through the CockroachDB serverless platform, which is what this is. Um, in this section, we'll write SQL queries to a CockroachDB. That should be slightly different. To a CockroachDB database within a free CockroachDB serverless beta cluster. That's too much. Let's undo this. There we go. We'll write queries to a database within a free serverless cluster to store data from a client application. We use Netlify functions to manage serverless functions that connect the app to the Cockroach cluster. This should be DB. Apparently, we're going to do some final edit edits live right now. We'll create a free cluster on CockroachDB serverless, then install the tools necessary to connect our system to the cluster. In the third section, we'll create a database for our application within the cluster. That's not what we do. We do it in the first section. Anyway, so one of the things that is not secure <laughs> that I do not recommend you use in production <laughs> is that I am going to create a file for my database and within this file i am going to put my connection information so this section is basically create a cluster um, and connect to the cluster um, i'm going to get you to here and in that create a cluster choose serverless the difference between serverless and dedicated is shared versus dedicated system it's kind of within the uh, description. I'm going with the default AWS. You do what you want. I uh, It defaults in the regions to the ones closest to your physical space. So I could choose west, but I am in the east. My spend limit is going to be zero today because I am cheap. No, I'm just kidding. Um, also because I can. And you get a certain amount for free, which is nice. Um, you will always get this amount free. So if I put like a $1 spend limit, it would still use up to 100 RUs and five gigabytes before it even started to get into that $1. So if I use less than five gig on my database for a month, it wouldn't even charge me, even if I had a $1 spending limit. And then I always, <laughs> I always, I like that it's stream cracker, but I always do sparkling kittens myself. Did I make this sparkling kitten? Yes, good. Plural. And then create your free cluster. It's ready in five to 10 seconds. 
which is just that long. And what I do is I kind of, now I keep in mind that I am not putting this code into production, but I copy this stuff down so that I have it in the central place. Um, please don't do that if you're in production. Um, this is the cert, which is exactly the same as the command. Well, it's close. Never mind. It's, it's not that close. Copy my connection string. And then I just copy all of these. Oops. Just kidding. All of these. Right. And then password. Fine, don't put password in there. Okay, so now I have a file where that exists. Another little hint, if you're just messing around, you can just leave that screen prompt open and it will not then take away your password. So we create the file. In this, do we actually wanna, yes. Um, so we're gonna copy down. Um, Is this the latest? It's actually not. This is not the latest version. So what you can do, by the way, is just copy from here. And this, this, oh, this is also not the latest. No, no, 21.2. This 22.1 is coming up. Never mind. I get our fiscal year and our product version number. It's not the same. It's not good for one's uh, dyslexia. Oh, yeah. And then this is your local password, not the password that it was given, that it gave you on the other page. This is your local password. Okay. Ding, ding. directories, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Which is this one. And then, yep, that's your ID. And then connect. Which is this. Boop. Boop. Boop, boop. So now I'm in hide. Thank you. Um, and I'm going to add a new database. And again, you can just copy and paste these commands over it straight from the uh, blog post that will be published later this week. I hope. Yeah. And then use James deck. And then, and you can tell, by the way, so, so when you first get in here, um, this big long command, that's my username. This is the database, or sorry, this is the host then this is the port number and this is the database that you're using so when i create that database jamstack i then have to tell the 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 host that i want to use the jamstack database in as opposed to the default db always make sure that you're switching if you are switching uh, because that can that can get real confusing real fast I'm going to get rid of this caption so you can see my stuff better. There you go. Boop. Okay. So this is creating a table within the Jamstack um, database called activities. You can see the name of the table here. Then within the activities, it has an ID number, which is a, which is a primary key. It then has a name, which is required. Then you have a description, which is required, like all of these are required. 
um, a description and activity type, which is either hiking or swimming or soccer. I always forget the fourth one. Um, how long? And you'll notice that these are var chars. It doesn't require like duration to be hours and minutes or just minutes or time. It it's it's whatever. The distance also doesn't have to be kilometers or miles. You can get really specific on that if you want to, but that's not something we do. The date created just comes based on the current date. Um, and just copy this whole thing into the command line and it creates the table. And then you can look at the table. I love, I love when we include shortcuts. And that's pretty ugly because it's huge, but you can kind of tell where everything is. Um, and then, then we're on to creating Netlify functions. Da, 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 da. Again, oh, I have a question in the chat. Hello. Right, great question. So why is the primary key not a UUID? Highly recommend in, <laughs> Alexander, good to see you, by the way. Um, UUID is recommended always, always, but for the purpose of this, um, there's all kinds of hints we put in here as to why this should not be used in production. And we went with a, something that most people just playing around for the first time would, would be more familiar with instead of a UUID can be intimidating, but that's a great question. Thank you. All right. Now we're gonna install React Static and Netlify CLI so that we can generate, oh, also we need to leave, thank you. Come with me and you'll be in a world of imagination. A little bit high. Alexander, what are you working on lately? I know it's fabulous. It always is. Oh, yeah, pseudo. Oh, wait. I remember I had to do pseudo for a lot of this stuff because this laptop be locked down. Yeah. Again, do not <laughs> like. There, there are a lot of things I would do differently on my own personal system rather than my work system. Like I don't, I do not recommend installing things using root permissions because you can miss all kinds of access errors that probably should be fixed instead of overwritten. <laughs> That's cool. I forgot about that. <laughs> Absolutely. Today very much is a do as I say, not do as I do day, apparently. I should uh, bust out some like fried food and chocolate and be like, this is how you eat healthy. Don't look at what I'm doing. All right, we're going to bring in the music just a little. Y'all, also, also today is the first day in a new office, which, you know, like background, woo, but I am also no longer right next to the router. And it scares me so much. It scares me so much. <sighs> no big deal. No big deal. Die. Okay. And that. I don't think I have to do a. I forget which commands I ended up having to do a sudo, and which I did not. But let's see what happens. I'll show you. I'll show you both. 
Um, I think I want to look at this. Oh, okay. We were very creative and called this jam stack. I'm going to call it jam stack. It's very original. And I'm using the basic template. Um, do, 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 do. I, yeah, today is definitely a do as I say, not do as I do. So we're using yarn by default with, um, so earlier in the article, we specifically were like, you, you need to have either yarn or NPM, but now we're kind of proving you need both because we used NPM before for the previous command and now React Static uses yarn. And I don't know if I didn't, and I do have both installed, but if I didn't have yarn installed, would it default to NPM? I don't know. Cool, good. And then we're just following the command literally that it says, I'm pretty sure. Yep. And then we're installing these four packages using yarn. Dot environment, PG, PG format, UUID, React Helmet. I just said four because it said four. I did not mean four. I meant one, two, three, four, five, six. Six new packages. And again, do I need sudo? <laughs> Let's see what happens. Oh, super fast. Look at you all fancy. And then initialize. Now, what I want to know is if you are following along and you um, get to this command, does it then prompt you to install Netlify? I'm thinking it does, because I also have this installed by default. So these commands, though, they're really good about being like, I don't know what you're talking about. Do you mean this? <laughs> um, um, I want to create. Yep. And it's my team. And my site name is Jamstack. We're very original again. Netlify CRDB. Cool. Now, these next few commands are, and, and it's got a couple of clarifying things. Be sure to pay very, very close attention. So now we are looking at the connection parameters. And if you look very closely at this database, <laughs> no music today. We'll turn it up, we'll turn it up. We can have a little bit of music. There you go. There you go. We have music. So if you look closely at this database name, it's sparkling kittens dash a very large number because I use sparkling kittens all the time. It's too loud, the music. So I put it on a three. That's better. And then it has dot default DB, which as we know, we're not using default DB, we're using Jamstack. So when you're setting up these variables, pay close attention to that detail. Um, so you don't just copy over the default DB database name. So in the instructions, we are setting the Netlify environment for the database. And then I'm copying twice, Oops. which means lots of, eh. and then, et voila, boop. And then for every environment, envir Netlify environment that you set, it should confirm. Set environment variable, database equals, blah, blah, blah. 
Okay. All right, Alexander. This is the host. We pretty much don't need to change anything else. Um, because by default the variable the the variables are already set. Unless you have closed this screen and then you're gonna have to grab your passwords from the uh file that you set up at the beginning of the stream. This don't change anything, you're good. That's your whole cert. My username is K. I am, which is, by the way, my, the initial of my first name, K Ring Leander. Boop. My password's still over here. which will be deleted by the time that actually you have, if you want to hack my stuff, you've got about 90 more minutes. Go for it. I won't judge. All right, it is cool to have music. Oh, I get to delete this. Done. Stop it. Stop it. Uh, the Netlify Tama goes into the root of the project directory. Okay, we were clear about that. Good. Okay. All right. In order to do serverless functions, we need to have Netlify. We're, in order to do Netlify serverless functions, Netlify is going to look for this directory, uh, the Netlify slash functions directory. And within those functions, Netlify slash functions directory is where we will put our separate functions. This is for Netlify, it's different for Lambda, it's different for everything. Ooh, that's a good question. When you're going to use a certificate, do you still use it as a chain or at some point can you upload it to a five? I have not tried that. I don't know. That's a great question. Actually, would you please, please, please go ask that question on forum? Um, because that is a great question. Let me see. Forum, forum, forum. Go post it over here. Um, and the reason is I haven't seen that question before and I would have to research it. Um, I'll copy it down and get you get an answer, but not this second. Great question. Thank you. Yeah, that's three. That'd be nice. Okay. Where was I? Did I already do that? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, it also has the Windows instructions. I'm on a Mac. Um, so I just use that. Right now, the Netlify functions directory is empty. Now we're going to start. I want to say we have... Uh, Three, two or three functions in this app. I might have too much going on. Okay. So this is an interesting one because we are actually adding this 
section within the package.json. I'm going to scoot this over just a little so you can see it side by side. Um, so we're going to, yeah, there it is. This is a file that was created when we created the React static. And within it is the series of um, files and stuff that is built when the site goes up live. And what we want to do is we want to go wait before you run all the other stuff, all the React commands and whatnot. But for the for the React section of it, we want Netlify to do this. We want a Netlify command first. So that goes up towards the top. And it's start functions. Basically, please run this first. And we're putting it at the top of our scripts. And we're saying Netlify dev before anything else. Okay, I'm going to make this big again. I really don't like it squishied. This is a technical term. All right. You know what? I think that was my old terminal. I hope that doesn't mess up the demo today. And then basically we're saying, we're telling that file to reload so that it has the Netlify dev at the top. See, look, oh, okay. I'll wait until it's finished. Um, see how it runs. So here's our command yarn start function. Okay. Just put stuff on me. Why, why don't you? It's, we're saying, okay, run the Netlify dev first and then do the build with the environment after. Um, so these are our Netlify um, environment variables that we put in one by one. Um, and then yeah, it's, ooh, let's not do that. Then it's starting the Netlify with a React static. And then we have our React static site. So it's blank, of course, because we haven't given it anything else to go on. We just built it. So let's make it prettier. Is that big enough? Let's do this. It's very, very simple. Okay, that's what we did. Now for the rest of this, whoops, for the rest of this, I'm leaving this terminal alone and I'm actually gonna open a new tab and have this site be live this whole time. And then I'll poke it every once in a while, but for the most part, it stays live. So this is a new tab. So you can see that that's why I was like, oh, I, sh I forgot to close this other tab. So this is going to stay live the whole time. You can actually access this via localhost 3000 as well as localhost 5050. <clears throat> Let me just clear my voice. Um, but yeah, so we're still in the same directory that we just ran that in. We're just opening a new terminal so that we can run commands and stuff like this. Okay. Now for the fun part. So this is inside, this is our first function, which is a create activity function. We're going to create it inside the Netlify functions directories. And I am going to copy and paste as much as possible. And also use tab complete. Thank you very much. Tab complete is your friend. Whoop. Boom. So I just copied all that code. And then it, by the way, in the blog post, we will be describing 
exactly what the code is doing within so that you don't have to take the time now. But if you want to go into that a little bit more, please do. Um, and this is just to make sure that that create activity um, you can use an API test to make sure that it's working. Um, this is, this is the hiking sample <laughs> and like I press enter and then I hope, um, there. And what you're looking for is something like this, um, where it's like, yes, we got you. Um, and that is testing our first function. Okay. Yes, we do. Um, so now we're going to create activities function within Netlify functions. Okay. Then test that function. It should give us, yes. So the first function is the actual creation. So we have to do that test first so that when we do this, where we get that activity back from the second function, we can confirm that it worked or not. Yay! Yep, two. Okay, two, not three or four. We're building with two functions, two Netlify functions. I've stared at this article maybe too much. Just saying. Okay. Um, yeah, source slash. I should probably be highlighting these for my publisher. Being like, you know what? You might want to change this into an editor. Oh, wait, did it say replace? Or just modify? Yeah, no, replace the whole thing. So since that already exists, Again, do as I say, not as I do. That's how I erase the whole file really quick. Maybe don't do that if you're not brave, like me. Or maybe do it anyway, if you are brave. So this one, is adding the CSS styles to the components that already that to to the file that's already there. So in this case, you cannot simply uh, remove and re-add, but you have to copy and insert at the top of the file. With CSS, by the way, it doesn't care where it is as long, or it, it kind of does. It prioritizes, but because these are only these are CSS that we only use in our functions and whatnot. Um, we can put them anywhere. Boop. See, and there's the rest of our CSS. All right, Alexander, thank you. I am jamming on the music. All right, did I close that? Yes. Okay. Next, we open the static config JavaScript file in the root of the project to create routes for two pages within the application. Um, I'm pretty sure this is also a replacement, but let me double check. Um, 
the static. As for default, no. No, it's a, it's a replacement. Okay, good to know. We're, setting, we're adding a default page. So by default, um, the by default, um, it's it's freaking out right now because it's it's trying to point to the index.js on the pages, but we just told it to point to a different um, a different page as the default. Um, so don't look at that. It's cool. All right, create activity in the source pages directory. This is gonna be a heavy coding blog post. Okay. Okay, and then in activities. So this one was create activities. So when you're adding new ones by hand, as opposed to using the API and the Netlify function, there's going to be an actual create activities page. And then this next page that we're creating activities is like all of the activities that are already um been created this activities page is the one that will be the default page if you just come to your local host or on netlify the um the website or the the url address within netlify I'm pretty sure it's in source pages. Yes, in the pages directory. Actually, should I do this? I think I should. It bothers me. It bothers me when we don't, we have the full path to some and only like the half path to some others. Uh, like let's, let's get consistent here. And this totally is supposed to have a semicolon it begins yes i'm kind of just getting rid of some of my notes as well so theoretically okay and then we should be able to do create activity Oop. Okay, so swam the English channel. Um, not really because I don't swim, but a person can dream. I want to say it is 21 miles. And it took me a mere seven hours and 30 minutes swimming. Oh, and that looks terrible because we <laughs> increased the size of this page so much. That's okay. Create activity. One of the things that I would recommend doing. <laughs> yes, I swam the English Channel in February. <laughs> um, yeah, I would not. I would not actually do that. This doesn't have a confirmation page, which I strongly recommend you create, but we will be able to see our activities once we've completed this app over here. 
Um, so this is the mountain hiking with Austin. Um, so now we need to create our default activities page. Making an activity card file in source components. Not, not what I meant to do. There we go. Oh, there also is no semicolon. Maybe it works without the, oh, that's not gonna be good. Let's do that. Okay. Oop. I wonder if it, I wonder if JavaScript works with or without the semicolon. Does anybody know that? Now I'm curious. And then this is, so what we did before with the activities.javascript, it was just a quick blank loading stuff. It wasn't actually pointing to our database, which is why this is pretty generic. Now we're going to do the whole thing, the actual whole thing. So again, my trick <laughs> is um, like there's my Vim statement, which is just that generic. Um, I'm going to remove it. And then redo the page and now it's blank. So this is the full file, which is much longer. See semicolon. So it basically, oh, activity types, data. That's not, that can't be right. It should be activities, data. Is that in here? Yeah, activities data. That's what I thought. JavaScript interpreters will add semicolons for you. So if you're not using Emacs or Vim, you will be taken care of. But if you are, you better add that semicolon. So I found a little, this is not the right thing. You can either do 3000 or 50-50 for consistency sake. I'm doing 50-50. And now, okay. I would, I would add it too. So it's a good thing we're, it's a good thing we're going over this stream before I send it over to the publishers. Um, so I swam the English channel. This is the one that I added because I was feeling sassy. And then this is the trip to the mountains. It's the one that we added using the API to test that the functions was running all the way, um, what, 30 minutes ago. Um, so we've done two things which are wildly not alike and neither of which I have actually done, but I could have. All right, so we know this works locally which is cool. Yay. So now we're going to deploy to Netlify. Again, you need to have a Netlify um, account, but it's free. And now we're going to see what, just see what happens. Again, we're going to find out how much I should be using to do to do this. <laughs> Um, I feel like I just ran this NPX browser list at latest dash dash update dash db a few times because I just finished this up on Friday and this morning and I was like, all right, I'll run that. 
And then it still did this over and over again. Because it does it as it's testing things. All right. Oh, we got an error. Failed exporting HTML for URL blog. Cannot read property map of undefined. Hmm. That's new. Oh, wait, was I supposed to clean up? Just a minute. I'm pretty sure I was supposed to clean up. Yep, look. This is important, kids. Read all <laughs> RTFM. Read everything. That's what that means, RTFM. Okay, delete the source pages blog. Oh, wait. Let me just make sure. Oh. Oh, no, there it is. LS source pages. We need to delay blog, index, and about. <laughs> RT, RTF, GD. Very good. So, that, that, yes, <laughs> uh, RTFBP blog post once it's published later this week. So that's important because I didn't run into this before and it was because I deleted those three pages. So apparently if you don't delete those pages, it will freak out. <laughs> Cause like it didn't, it was like, what do you mean? Where's the blog? So let's do it again. Um, which should be the NPM. Yep. And um, by the way, it no matter if you've just run MPX browsers list at latest, it will still keep telling you to run that. So we'll just let it tell us to do that. Okay, so the reason why, seriously, Seriously, you're just gonna keep going. Hey, wait, yes, that's what we want. Yes. Okay, <laughs> read everything. Do as I say, not as I do. So we did the NPM run spell. It, yes, there we go. Whoops, yes, that. Boop. And yes, all of my commands boop. <gasps> Will we get this done within an hour? I am going to be so impressed. I am going to be so impressed. Shut up. I know it looks exactly the same. Let me show you. Uh, let me do this. Oop, don't do that. Don't do that. Do this. Gonna do that first. I'll show you, this is actually deployed. So what is our activity name? Um, silks. And if you don't know what silks are, um, killed my Actually, a full body workout at Detroit Flying Circus. Silks are these like circus apparatuses. They're basically they're massive things of silk. And then you have to pull yourself up by your body. 
which if you don't have full body, and of course it's not a distance thing, so we're going to say it's skating, um, and that it was definitely a five kilometer thing. It was a 90 minute class and I feel dead. <laughs> and again, swam the English Channel silks. And apparently these are in alphabetical order. So if you wanted to sort them by latest, you would have to change the application slightly. So that's pretty cool. We did it. 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 I'm always amazed and astounded uh, when things work. I know. I should probably no longer be amazed and astounded, but I'm always amazed and astounded and happy when things work. So once again, I have already uploaded this code, including all the application uh, passwords and parameters that you probably should not upload to the GitHub repo. And those, uh, those, those clusters have been deleted, so it's all good. Um, no, you too. Uh, yeah, if you are interested in this, subject matter and would like to learn more be sure to subscribe on youtube and yeah thank you for joining today's open source stream i cannot believe we did this in less than an hour um yeah so tuesday tomorrow uh, my colleague adrian howard will not be doing a casual coding tuesday because he is on a boat which we are all very jealous but adrian Love you. Very jealous. Uh, this week on Wednesday and Thursday, I know there's other stuff going on on YouTube slash CrackerHDB. Check it out. And Friday, Thursday morning, uh, Raphael is doing a Watch Me Work where he plays Friday. I, oh, Friday we have off. Friday is a roach and relaxation day. So I will not be streaming a Playing With Roaches Day. Um, Alexander, as always, it's so awesome to see you. Um, don't forget to post that channel on forum. Ping me if you like. I'll get you an answer. And yeah, have a good day, y'all. Let's dance it out. <laughs>